Hello, Sagittarius. Welcome to your March 2023 tarot card reading. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. For those of you who are new here, my name is Jane. Thank you all so much for being here. So March is a huge month and astrologically, we astrologers have been looking at March 2023 for a really long time. Now I am going to be posting the astrology segments in a separate video in the next couple of days. So this video is only going to be the tarot card reading. But if you want to get notified for that astrology segment, please make sure to subscribe and hit the little bell because there is just so much going on in March. It's definitely one of the months that's like a must see, must pay attention, must know. So anyway, this, this video is only going to be the tarot card reading. Um, please make sure to check out your sun, moon, or rising sign. And if you're here for love, you're more than welcome to check out your Venus sign as well. Um, and with that being said, let's go ahead and get straight into the reading. Hello, Sagittarius. Welcome to your, um, tarot card reading for March, 2023. Let's go ahead and take a look, open up the channel with a card from my intuitive deck here. Okay, so uh, I feel like your heart is pulling you in one direction, but your life is leading you in another direction. And there does seem to be some kind of a split some kind of a disconnect where they like certain aspects of you are not really matching up very well. Um, this is going to be a really important time for you to pay attention to things like balance in your life to, to make sure that, you know, your spiritual life is just as prioritized as your regular life. You know, your romantic life is just as prioritized as your non-romantic life or relationships, right? That you're going to need to give credence to everything. You're going to need to give time and energy and investment to everything. Because if you overweight it too heavily in one area, because more, spe more specifically, um, well, it's like the path your heart wants to go versus the path that your life is leading you. If you go too far on the side where your life is leading you, you might start to resent yourself. But if you go too far down the path that your heart is leading you, you may completely sabotage everything you've built. And I don't think you want either one. So this is why balance is so important because somehow everything is going to need to get integrated and somehow you need to keep everything intact. Um, there has to be an outlet. Okay. We are in Pisces season, finding an outlet or finding a place of escape or finding a, you know, a, a place that is away from the world or away from the regular is going to be really, really important but I also don't want to see you escaping too much. Okay. We have to make sure that those scales stay balanced to some degree. Um, so giving yourself wiggle room, giving yourself grace, being able to communicate with people in terms of what you need saying, Hey, I can't really be there this week. I'm going to have to go do this other thing or, Hey, sorry, I'm not going to be able to show up because I committed to this other thing first. Okay. Um, but also being able to cancel or reprioritize things in a way that really makes your soul happy. Cause I feel that there's kind of like a little bit of a teeter totter and it's a very precarious situation. If you're not giving energy and investment to the things that really feed you and light you up and, and make you feel fulfilled, the, the kind of resentment is going to build very, very quickly. And you're going to take it out on people that don't really deserve that. Okay. So, um, you're going to have to assert your requests. You're going to have to say, Hey, this is what I want. This is what I need. And, um, that's just going to kind of be the way of it. <laughs> I don't know that anyone's going to be able to say, say it otherwise. Okay. So let's take a look here. Um, what does the universe need from you? A major arcana. What else does the universe need from you? Okay. I saw that one first. We've got judgment. 
Uh, okay, so I like judgment, but even here with the artwork here, we have like an angel and a demon here. So there's that balance of, you know, of the dualities coming through. Um, on one hand, there's the things you're supposed to do. And then on the other hand, there's the things that you just desperately want to do. Um, and maybe you are feeling a little bit split. You know, you're feeling like you're battling selves, but actually I think this is a good thing because it's enabling you to integrate. Cause if there's there, if, if it does feel like you're being torn into two different directions or maybe more directions for some of you, but if you are feeling torn between two different directions or two different options, it's important to understand the, the reason why, right? Because there are two parts of you that want two different things. It seems pretty simple and straightforward, but when you really think about it, that's important to know right? And to understand all the different aspects of ourselves. <clears throat> so I feel like these options, these pathways are really here to help you Sagittarius become more whole. And as you are trying to figure out a way to balance these two aspects of you, you actually become a more balanced, more well-rounded person. Now I'm not a, I'm not a fool. Okay. Like I know that sometimes life has to get out of balance and there really isn't such thing as a perfect balance, like work life balance type of thing. But, um, you can work to balance out different aspects of yourself. And I think that's more of what's going on here. So it's not that every aspect of your life is being met or being matched here. It's the two aspects of you are being matched. And I don't want to see you compromise on either one. If you need a play day, go play, but then the next day come back and go to work. Okay. So kind of balance it out like that, offering both parts of you to have a legitimate voice and a voice that you listen to. Okay. It's not a good time to ignore an inner voice. So what is the environment? Who is in the environment that Sagittarius needs to be aware of? We have a Knight of Wands. Beautiful. I love this. This is a Sagittarius card, actually. It's kind of happening a lot this month where the card that represents the sign I'm reading for shows up environmentally, meaning this is someone else. Now, it might not be a Sagittarius per se, okay, but it's certainly someone who vibes very well with you. But the fact that this person is looking like, so I'm going to set the cards here. So this person is really looking away from the reading back turned toward the reading. So someone might be leaving your life or might not be necessarily involved in what you have going on right now. They might be kind of a satellite energy that's just sort of circulating around your life right now. Um, this is someone who again, matches your energy, matches your philosophy, your mindset, your open-mindedness, your will and sense of adventure and growth. Um, but they're also doing it in their own way as well. And, uh, perhaps this is a case where you have to go your route and they have to go theirs. Now you will probably stay in each other's lives. I don't think this person is specifically leaving. Okay. It's just that the integration with this other person is on hold or on hiatus. Now this might not be romantic. Okay. For some of you, yes, it will be for others of you. No, it won't be. This is someone who is going to stick around, but for now they need to be in and out of your life. And I think for many of you, that will be a good thing as you're trying to figure out this internal duality and these two voices and these two aspects of yourself that's coming out here. This gives you space to figure out who you are and to figure out what's going on, to figure out what you need and what you want without the threat of someone leaving you behind or the threat of someone completely abandoning you. This person will not abandon you. All right. They will, however, come and go a little bit here and there to check in, see how you're doing, but they'll also go live their life. They're not going to put their life on hold for you. 
Some of you that might be a little bit painful or a little bit scary to hear. And others of you that may feel like a breath of fresh air, like, oh my gosh, thank goodness. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad this person is, is not going to leave, but you know, but will give me the space to figure myself out a little bit. Um, I do think that Knight of Wands in a generic way is a really, really good friend. So whatever capacity, whatever role they hold in your life, they're a good friend in that they're a good human being and they understand what it means to be a human being. Okay. So let's take a look. Strength. Another judgment card. You are going to have some epiphanies this month, Sagittarius. There's going to be some really, look, a lot of major arcana coming out right out of the gate. So March is a, well, March is a big month astrologically with Saturn for you coming over that fourth house cusp. Now I always say the fourth house cusp is probably one of the most important angles in the, on the entire wheel, more than the first more than the 10th, more than the seventh, the fourth is so prominent because it's foundational. So your foundation is getting rocked a little bit, which is why there's, you know, an awakening for you, an epiphany, a new brilliant idea, a new perspective, a new way of seeing something. Um, because you're needing to make that shift for the sake of this transformation that is occurring, but you also have to have the strength in order to really go through this process. There are going to be some Sagittarians that do not give credence to different aspects of themselves, All right? They don't understand they're being pulled in two different directions and and because they don't understand that those two different directions are an indication of something, it's an indication of an inner child aspect knocking on the door being like, hello, have you forgotten about me? All right? And if they don't do it, they don't recognize and they don't understand, they're going to choose one path. And then those consequences I said, like they're going to build resentment or they're going to self-sabotage either way. There are a lot of Sagittarians on the brink of massive self-sabotage or massive resentment because they're not feeding the whole picture. Okay. And it does take a great will to be able to do that. This is upper tier, upper echelon type of stuff. This is what people who are on the healing and spiritual track in their lives. Um, this is what you have to contend with. Not every Sagittarian is going to be able to do that because it's hard and it's scary and it's going to drudge up a lot of stuff from the past. Okay. But if you're willing to do it, you can, and you will, and it's going to completely change you. And it's also going to change your relationships as well with that Knight of wands. The reason why I like this Knight of wands is there's no judgment. This is not someone who's looking in at you and thinking, oh, you're so weak or whatever. I think this is someone who absolutely respects the process. And because they do respect it, they're going to let it happen. And they're not going to try to control it. And they're not going to try to make it be something that it just simply is not. And a Knight of Wands, for you, Sagittarius, maybe what, right? Two aspects. On one hand, you're super, super grateful for that. But on the other hand, maybe you're going to feel a little bit lost because this person isn't as involved as you would like them to be. And you're maybe to a degree on your own. Well, you are on your own because every person's spiritual journey is one they must take themselves. Now you can be surrounded by people, seems like you are, who understand it but your journey is your own. Okay. And the, because the Knight of wands understands that it's why they're behaving the way they're behaving. Okay. So we have five of cups, the queen of swords and the six of coins. So the five of cups suggests a loss, grief, sorrow, sadness, 
um, an inability to, to see the good sometimes. Um, I, I do think Sagittarius is going to have a bout of nostalgia this month. This is a huge month, right? Astrologically, did I say that already? If I haven't said it already, it is. It's a big month. And with Saturn coming across that fourth house, you immediately get pulled into your past. And I've, I've been through a Saturn through the fourth house transit before. Okay, I'm a Libra rising, so I went through it a while ago um, when it was in Capricorn. And it does pull you deep into your psychology. It pulls you deep into your past and it gets you to work on your relationship with your parents, your relationship with where you came from, your upbringing, your culture, and a lot of different influences that had influence over you as you were growing up. It's required a little bit of analysis, but it's not the sake of analysis to keep you hung up in the past, but rather analyzing it for understanding so you can move on. The point of the five of cups is not to sit and stare at everything that went wrong, but rather to understand the gifts that those wrongdoings or those failures or those losses or those traumas gave you. Right, because the, the, there there is treasure in in there somewhere. The point of the five of cups is to be able to see the treasure, to be able to see the gold, to see the wealth and the prosperity of those experience uh, that those experiences have afforded you. So there is an aspect of self there for sure, and with the queen of swords. Now, I like the fact that we kind of have some, this is a Libra card and we got the scales balanced here and these are perfectly balanced scales. It's important to note that. Um, and I like that her back is turned to the five of cups as well, because it suggests that she doesn't want to dwell. And I think with strength, there's a lot of power coming to help you emerge from this place. So you may be here temporarily, maybe a couple days, maybe a week, something like that. You're here in this place, boom, all of a sudden you get hit with a wave of nostalgia thinking about the past, but you don't sit and dwell. You immediately make sense of it. You immediately begin to understand the good things that happen because of that. And there's a lot of determination to do something with it, right? Um, and maybe that's where this split is. Maybe your soul is calling you to finally heal this aspect of, of child self, your inner child, whatever, that has been suppressed for a really, really, really long time. And that path in no way, shape, or form is a threat or a deterrent from the life path that you have chosen in terms of career and family and, and all that kind of thing. But you have to give this inner child a voice right now. You have to give it a voice because if you don't give it a voice, everything is going to get skewed. And I think there's a, a, a strong wave of Sagittarian generosity here with that six of coins as well. A lot of compassion coming through, a desire to be of service and desire to help maybe as a means of making up for something here or as a means of healing with something here. But this, I think, is the transmutation. Here you are transmuting a five of cups into something that actually helps people, something that actually makes a difference in someone's lives. Because I don't think Sagittarius is content just only going through the healing. It's like if nothing good is going to come out of the healing other than my own feeling good, then it's not good enough. I, I want this to help others. I want to teach others. I want to talk to people. I want to help guide people or coach people, or I want to assist others in some way, shape or form so that they can have what I never had. Six of, I'm sorry, uh, three of cups, I don't know, six of cups, <laughs> three of cups, nine of cups. And the Hierophant. So the Hierophant speaks to that voice of truth, that inner guardian that always keeps us aligned with our highest path. And 
It's the path of goodness. It's the path of love and compassion. It's the path of greatest experience. In no way, shape, or form do I see Sagittarius wavering from that path. It seems to be just like, it seems to be so strong and so ingrained in what you have going on that there genuinely is no threat of you wavering there, okay? All of this is driven, all this is happening because you are unable, and sometimes I look at this um, two, I'm sorry, this uh, infinity symbol above her head here, and it does feel like someone is bound, like Sagittarius is bound to the infinite here. And you're not wandering, you're not lost, you're not confused. Please do not mistake the surfacing of an inner child voice as confusion. It's actually quite the opposite. It is the voice of acquiring clarity. Okay. Now I like the three of cups here. We have three cups spilled and then we have three cups of celebration. This is also an indication of transmuting an experience that may you have may have perceived as something hard or bad, or you may have perceived it as a trauma, but now I feel like the story is being rewritten here. <laughs> the story um, of the pain, the story of the loss, the story of the sorrow is being transmuted into something. Now, I'm not trying to trivialize some of people's experiences because some people have been through some really, really hard things. And I'm, I'm not saying you're going to go to the bar and start toasting your friends. I'm like, oh, what a great experience. Not really like that, but you are going to take that pain and transmute it into something good. And I think you have people around you, friends, family, community members, neighborhood people, whatever the case may be, um, that understand that. And they too have also done something good. Now, I wonder if Sagittarius is in a situation where they are wanting to associate or affiliate with a new type of community. With Saturn in that third house, I feel like that community component has been somewhat blocked and connecting with people has been a bit of a challenge. When Pluto comes in, Pluto is not a block, okay? He's not a resistance. He indicates an incredibly deep desire and a willingness to do whatever it takes to make it happen. But there's also a lot of fear associated with that as well. So Sagittarius is stepping into this place where they want more than anything to associate and affiliate with amazing people that match their values. But there's also a little bit of hesitation and resistance in terms of what it's going to take to grow into that. Okay. Now you're willing to, I know you're willing to embrace the growth. It's just initially can be a little bit odd as we're making this transition in March. But really your hopes and dreams are coming true. And by integrating this other voice, you are going to get closer and closer and closer to a life that you are just absolutely thrilled with. Some of you are already pretty happy with your lives, but I know with Jupiter and Aries that all of us, and even when Jupiter comes into Taurus in May and stays for the rest of the year and on into 2024 before it goes into Gemini, um, it is going to be a time where we just personally are wanting to massively grow. We want to grow ourselves, our sense of identity, and we want to grow our material world as well. So this is the initiation. This is us really beginning to do whatever it takes to make these hopes and dreams become a reality. All right. So integrating this other self, is going to be a big, big part of that. So let's take a look at the clarifiers. We're going to clarify this whole reading. So um, for those of you who are new, the cards I'm about to pull out are the cards we will cover in the comprehensive reading. The link for that will be found in the description box and the comment thread down below. Um, we usually talk for another 25 to 30 minutes about these cards. So let's take a look here for the judgment card. 
Um, what else does Sagittarius need to know? Okay. We've got the Sun, Two of Wands, and the Five of Swords. I'm loving the Sun for you a lot. The Lovers. Page of Wands and the Seven of Coins. Okay, now for the Strength card. Leo energy coming through there. We have the Devil. And the Page. You can't get rid of those little whispers, that's for sure. King of Coins. Nine of Swords. You guys are really going to feel Saturn coming in. There is no doubt about it. Leaning on your friends. It's a very good idea. Another judgment card. Three judgment cards. That's a lot of judgment cards. <laughs> that is a lot. Okay, two of two of cups. Seven of wands. Ten of coins. Knight of cups. Ace of Coins, Four of Coins. Ace of Coins has been coming out quite a bit this month, so I'm actually not surprised it's showing up. Knight of Swords. Okay, I'm liking the Knight of Swords for you, which is good. Definitely like the Knight of Swords. For the Hierophant. Coins, five of wands. Okay, so this is where we're going to pick up in the comprehensive. You guys know I love you. Have an amazing month. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.